So the goal of our research is to try and image the Earth's interior on a global scale. We're basically 3D cartographers of, of the Earth's mantle. So we are using data from earthquakes recorded all over the world. And all that information is used to try and constrain three-dimensional pictures of the Earth's interior. What has happened in recent years is that we now have the ability to numerically simulate in 3D the full physics of seismic wave propagation in the Earth's interior. To do this, we need SOMED. Imagine an earthquake happens and it generates waves. These waves travel through the Earth's interior and then are then recorded by a network of seismographic instruments that record the motion of the ground, up and down, north, south, east, west, the three components of the motion. Those are the observations, those are the data. The next phase is to try and simulate that process. We propagate numerically using the equations of physics how the waves travel through our model of the Earth, and that leads to a set of simulated time series. And now we have a set of observations and simulations that can be directly compared. And the differences between those two time series, the observations and the simulations, places constraints on what the Earth's interior can look like. It's that information that tells us how we need to improve our models. And that is the essence of seismic tomography. We are trying to make images of the variations in the seismic wave speeds in the mantle, where the material properties vary as a result of changes in the mineralogy or because of changes in, say, temperature. If the rock is solid, it will transmit waves at a certain speed. But if you warm it up and you soften it, typically the wave speeds of that rock will be reduced. And that shows up as subtle changes in the arrival times of the waves on the surface observed in seismograph. So as a result of this process, what we see emerging are the Earth's tectonic plates being subducted in the mantle. And we see them showing up in our tomographic images as relatively cold, faster anomalies. And then coming from the core mantle boundary, we see these very large, massive, warm upwellings that are sometimes called superplumes. And they manifest themselves in terms of slower than average wave speeds, where there is warm, hot material coming up from the core mantle boundary and making its way to the surface. The data set that we use to do our research currently consists of 1,480 earthquakes. Now imagine that for each of these earthquakes, we need to do one full 3D simulation each and every time we want to compare our simulated data to the observations. So this is a de-iterative process and it's extraordinarily expensive uh, from a computational perspective. These are very large numerical meshes and the computations must be performed in parallel. In the past, any data transfer between memory on the GPU versus memory on the CPU has been is, is a real limiting factor. There is data from about 6,000 earthquakes that have already been recorded, and that data is readily available. The only reason we are not using it all is because we, we cannot afford to. It's too expensive numerically. So this is where the move from Titan to Summit is really great. The new uh, NVIDIA Volta GPUs with the uh, additional memory on the chip is going to make a big, a big difference. Anything we can do to try and keep everything on the GPU in memory is, is going to make a tremendous difference in terms of performance. It's extremely important that you only assimilate good data. And what we need are tools that can make these decisions for us. We have literally millions of seismograms and we've made tens of millions of measurements. Now that's a great training set for an AI tool. And so we've started to do this. We have a, a beta version of a machine learning tool that helps us with the identification of suitable measurements. So it's not inconceivable at some point that you can train a deep learning neural network to actually simulate, predict seismograms. On a global scale, this imaging really is a discovery mission. Underneath North America, for example, we can find very clear images of remnants of what used to be the Farallon plate. We have some of the clearest images of that slab being subducted into the mantle. Today, it no longer exists, so there are real discoveries to be made.